Hi guys, so in the last video we learned how to apply the chi-square test and I had shown you an example uh, so if you remember there, there were two kinds of chi-square test one was the for the goodness of fit goodness of fit test and the other was the independence of variable test independence of variable test all right so uh, the last in the last video the example that i had chosen was for this case the chi square test for goodness of fit uh, so good, uh, goodness of fit of course it means that uh, let's say that we have an exam that let's say that we have some data and we want to check that if that data follows a particular model or not so in that case we use the goodness of fit test now the other situation in which the chi-square test is applicable is when we have uh, two variables and we want to check if they have uh, any association with them or we, we are basically checking if these two variables are independent or not. So we'll be taking an example of this case in this video. So let's say that we have this uh, question here. All right. So it says that two sample polls were conducted for two candidates A and B in rural area and the urban area as well and the uh, data was collected uh, and then we want to check examine whether the nature of the area is related to the vot uh, voting performances in these elections. All right. We want to check if rural area is inclined towards a specific candidate or a urban area voters are inclined towards a specific candidate or not all right so we want to check if there is a relation between the kind of area and the kind of candidates okay so now we first have to set up the null hypothesis all right so null hypothesis of course uh, of course we nullify the claim that has been set to us therefore therefore it would be that the voting performances and the nature of the area are not related okay the nature of the area is independent of voting performance all right so this is the uh, h naught for us so uh, the alternate hypothesis would be that of course it would be that then the two are not independent or dependent on each other so we can say that the nature and the voting performance are associated in some way all right so we have uh, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis as well now we need to apply the chi-square test we have this formula here the same as we had used all right so now we want to calculate the observed frequencies denoted by OI we need to calculate the expected frequencies denoted by the EI and then we need to calculate the chi-square values okay so now for uh, finding the expected frequencies we first need to find the totals all right so we calculate the totals the row total and the column total as well therefore I am typing in equal to I select this plus this value here and press enter okay now same oh and typing in equal to I select this value here and plus this value here and press enter now we need to calculate these totals as well type in equal to select this value and press enter same with this 
now we have the totals now we need to calculate the grand totals now grand totals can be calculated by adding these two values these two values or all these four values all right so I'm using the function sum inside the brackets I'm selecting this data complete the brackets and press enter all right so now we uh, form two different columns for one for the observed frequencies and the other for the expected frequencies for observed frequencies I'm naming it as OI and for expected frequencies I'm naming it as EI okay now the observed frequencies would of course be these four values because these ha these values have been obtained from the survey all right so simply we need to type in all these values Three eighty and four fifty. Now we need to calculate the expected frequencies for this six, uh, this six twenty here for five fifty for three eighty and four fifty as well. We need to calculate the expected frequencies for all these four values. All right. To calculate that, we need to ca calculate every. Uh, we will need to calculate every value individually by typing in the manu formula manually. All right. So let's say I'm finding out the expected frequency for 620. I write that as E of 620. How can I calculate that? Now look in the uh, table that has been provided to you. All right. Now find out the corresponding column and the row to which it belongs. Uh, all right. So inside the columns, it, it is in the A column and inside the rows it is in the rural row all right now identify the totals associated with it 1170 and 1000 okay so what what the formula suggests us to do is that we type in equal to we select this total multiply it by the other total and we divide this this multiplication uh, the value that we will get after multiplication we divide this value by the grand total all right 2000 here and press enter that's it you get e620 expected frequency of 620 now we need to calculate the expected frequency of 550 all right now again the same formula we type in equal to now inside uh, this table the 550 has two totals associated with it now we select this one total of it and multiply it by the other total all right now dividing it by the grand total and press enter that's it now we calculate the oh, expected frequency of 380 all right we type in equal to again the same thing 380 is here the totals are 830 and 1000 therefore I select one of the values multiply it by the other value and divide it by 2000 and press enter same with uh, for 450 as well we type in equal to select one of the totals multiply it by the other total and divide it by 2000 I'm repeating the formula again if you want to find the expected frequency for 450 you need to identify the rows and the columns to which this 450 belongs all right and then identify the totals associated with it now 450 it belongs to the b column and it has total 830 it belongs to the urban uh, urban row and the total associated is 1000 therefore we multiply 830 and 1000 and then divide it by the grand total all right so now we have these four uh, expected frequencies as well so we type in these values in this column 585 again 585 415 and 450 now we have uh, the expected and the observed frequencies all right now we need to calculate the oi minus ej column okay oh 
y minus e i values we type in equal to select one y minus e i and press enter that's it you get the value now drag it down and press control d you get all of the values now we need to calculate the oi minus ej oi minus ei whole squared values right ei raised to 2 how do we calculate that we type in equal to select this thing here multiply by itself and press enter okay now we need you can just drag it and press control d Now we need to calculate the OI minus EI whole squared divided by EJ. Now I am going along with the formula that I had shown you. We have calculated OI minus EI whole squared, this numerator here. Now we need to divide it by the corresponding expected frequencies. Okay, I'm naming it as, as chi squared values. Type in, e type in equal to, select this value divided by the corresponding ej values and press enter that's it all right now you can simply drag it and press ctrl d you get all of the uh, values here now for calculating the chi squared values chi squared tabulated values chi squared calculated sorry chi squared calculated values we need to sum all these four values therefore we use the function sum inside the brackets select these four values complete the brackets and press enter okay now again for uh, basing our decision we need another value called the chi square tabulated value all right chi squared tabulated value now as in the last video we will be using the same function again chi chi square inverse dot rt this function here all right select this function now again inside these brackets we have two values to be inserted the first is probability the probability of course again is 0 0.05 because the alpha value is 0 0.05 and we haven't been provided with any other alpha value all right so i'm putting in 0 0.05 comma 0 0.05 now the other value to be inserted is the degrees of freedom now the degrees of freedom can be calculated by multiplying the multiplying two values the r minus one value and the c minus one value now r stands for the number of rows c stands for the number of columns we have two rows here, rural and urban. So therefore, R minus one value will, would be one. The, there are, we have two columns as well, one for the candidate A and the other for candidate B. Therefore, the C minus one value would be one again. Now we need to multiply both of these values. In this case, both are one. Therefore, the multiplication will give you one and that is the degrees of freedom, okay? So we type in 1 here, press complete the brackets and press enter. That's it. You get the chi squared tabulated values. The degrees of freedom, again, let's, I'm, I'm just writing it down. Degrees of freedom are r minus 1 r minus 1 multiplied by the c minus 1 value r r is 2 here c also is 2 all right so now we have these two values here chi square tabulated and the chi square calculated values now if you remember the condition for accepting the null hypothesis was that uh, the chi squared calculated value should be greater than the chi squared tabulated value all right which is the case here therefore we accept the null hypothesis we write the conclusion as let's say all right 
h not is accepted at 5% level of significance. So conclusion is that the nature of the nature of the area is independent of the voting performance. Alright, so this is the conclusion. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you.